Dee, 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 dee. Lovely day here in central Pennsylvania. Uh, I don't know, it's about 80 something degrees. Some humidity, as always. But, what am I doing? I'm here on the wheel. Uh, yeah, I just want to have a go at, hope we've got enough battery, making some of these guys, which is kind of like slightly taller T-bowl forms. Uh, so, yeah, these are 15 ounces. Whoa. Get a bit more light on the subject. Just move in a little bit closer. Not too close, mate. <laughs> Hey, hope you're all doing well out there. Wherever you are, um, on planet Earth, whether you're in Florida, Alaska, <laughs> Europe, Asia, I don't know. So yeah. So yeah, these are 15, 15 ounces, got my mirror there. Yeah, basically made in the same way as sort of other tea bowls. So, so indeed. Keeping it in at the top there. Not too fast making tea bowls. What a nice, a nice slow, rhythmical speed. Can't get any feeling into a pot if you're going too fast. At least I don't think so. Yeah, fairly kind of free form. Go away, fly. I've got a fly trying to get up my nostril. So very slightly kind of uh go away. Um very slightly uh bowed in the side wall there. Let's get a little bit more height. Bearing in mind that they will shrink, of course. Yeah. Yep. Something like that. So throwing a stick down there just Give it, a, as it were, a token sticking just at this stage because this will be trimmed. I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit. What I have actually in mind for these is to put a bit of iron oxide on the outside to because I want to do sort of like white slip decor, uh, Hakami style decoration on top, and that always works better if you have a little bit of contrast between the white slip and the clay body underneath. So I'm going to put a bit of um, iron oxide wash over the top uh, and then I'm going to do the Hakimi white slip on top of that. 
so cut them off. Yeah, if anybody's interested in workshops, I am running workshops here. Got a workshop next month. Uh, okay, so there's a little bit of meat down the bottom here because these will be trimmed. Put in there. Yeah, workshops, July. It's either the 17th or the 18th or the 18th and 19th, I can't remember. I think I've got three people on that workshop. If anybody else wants to join us, then you would be more than welcome. It's going to drop this down a touch. Yeah. Just so you get a little bit more of a sideways angle. So centering. A lot of people write to me and have problems with centering. How do we center? So lean over your wheel like I'm doing. Make sure you, both your arms are supported. If you haven't got a tray like this, then you're going to have to use your, 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 your thighs, your legs. Okay. Then keep your elbows tucked in. Okay. So you want to compact your body, basically. All right. And then what I do is I, I tend to want to cone it like that. So kind of like squeezing it like here this part of my hand you see and squeezing it and as I squeeze I pull up okay so squeeze and, and pull up all right next right hand there to support now a lot of people I notice they're using their left hands and they're trying to do it with their right I don't that doesn't make sense to me but I mean I always if you're right-handed if you're right-handed and your arm and hand on your right hand is stronger than your left, then that needs to be your supporting arm. This is support here, okay, on the right, support. This is to center down here. Apply the, the point of the cone right there, okay, like that, with this here. And then you power down like that, okay, then my, my thumb just comes across the top here after I've done that. I can't really show that to you with the camera angle that we got. So if you do that, you'll find that it'll help you a lot to render the clay more submissive. And we want submissive clay, don't we? We don't want rebellious clay. You've got rebellious clay, you've got problems. Okay, so just breaking in here and now just pulling that up so getting underneath the clay here a bit and pulling it up make sure keeping it in at the top spread my finger like that over the over the pot, make sure my fingers are touching on both sides, the clay, and then apply water there. You can do it like that, or you can you, you, you can use a sponge. Okay. Okay, down into the bottom. Grab the clay that's right down here. You've got to get that clay right there and get underneath it. And then now pull it up. So, uh, contact with the clay is with the front of my fingers, okay? Not with the sides like that. A lot of people I throw, see, trying to throw like this, and they're using the whole of their hand like this. That's too, that's, that's not good. Too much contact area with the side of the pot will reduce your water, create extra friction and drag. You don't want that. You want to minimize contact. That's why I say use just the front pads of your of your fingers. Okay, I'm going to touch on the wheel head here so you can see where I'm talking. No, that didn't work. Hang on. So I want you to see that. You see that where my 
where that little bit of clay is there on the tops of my fingers, that's where you should be touching. On the front there, but not, not so your nail catches, but just that front bit. Because you get... Have you ever had uh, a buddy of yours come up to you and prod you? Hey, you! <laughs> if you prod with your fingers like that, end on, uh, you can get a little bit of indentation there, can't you, in, the, in, your, in your buddy, as you jab his shoulder. If you go up to your buddy like this and go like this, hey buddy, your buddy's going to say, what? <laughs> He's not going to notice it. But you put your hand like that and push. Same with the clay, you get more power when it's, it's, it's more straight onto the clay, not like that, okay? Just a bit of a funny example there for you, but anyway, just to show you. Um, and then join your thumbs as you, as you pull, like I'm doing, and you'll, you'll lessen the contact with the clay, which will preserve your water. See, this is all about water preservation, isn't it? Water preservation. Ah, oh, where's that one? Just put it here next to it for the minute. I'm just, I just, as a rough guide, it wants to be approximately that, like that. Okay, what next? We're just going to use this, the stick down there. And put the stick in. Not really, it's just to, because that's going to be trimmed, as I told you. All right, so let's use the side, side of my throwing stick, using it as a, and you notice as I'm touching it, it's pushed away from me like that. Okay, that's a good tip. Again, reducing contact area. You don't want to touch the whole of the side of the pot all at once because it, it will be maybe disastrous. I'm just doing this to remove excess because I'm not I don't want it there really particularly for these because these are gonna have a, di a different kind of decoration. Alright so what next? And down there to the bottom like that, take the water out. Okay, cut off wire. Straight through. Clean your hands on the side of your water pot, I recommend, like that. Now if you've got a water pot that's rather small and diddly, when you're going to do like that, the whole thing's going to fall over. <laughs> if you've got one that's like... If, you, if you've got a water pot small like this, it's slightly bigger. It's got a little bit of a, here on the top edge, it's got a little bit of sharpness. That's good, because it when you go like that, it cleans your hand better, you see. If you've got wet hands, when you go like that and like that, it kind of dries them and cleans them. All right, I'll put him next to his brother there. Do one more. One more. One more. Yes, greetings to Alaskan potters. Had a great time up there in Alaska. Enjoyed that. That was an eye opener. De by the way, if anybody's interested, I've got a couple of leech wheels available. I've got one kit wheel and I've got one finished wheel right next to me here. I can show you in a second. Uh, ready for pickup. The finished wheel I'm not shipping. It'll have to be picked up if anybody wants it. And I've got another another leech wheel which is a in a in a kit form which I can ship. I'd have to send you a shipping quote. I'd need your zip code to do that. Okay, 
Let's go down here to the bottom, grab that clay. Dee 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 dee. Yeah, beautiful summery weather around here. Get the clay out the bottom there, that's the secret, isn't it? I can hear a lovely bird out there twittering away. Twittering away. Twittering away. Yeah, that'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig. So, as I apply the stick, you can put your fingers down on the inside, just push. Push out the, the wall of the pot to the stick. Uh, you'll see me doing that quite often. I don't always do it. it, it it's So we clean all that off, you see. Let's go down here. Our light token sticking. Just to clean that off. And there we go, right, leather. And finally, sponge stick. And cut through. And now, clean off my hands on the side there. And off he comes. Good. Okay, thanks for joining us, folks, on this June June 29th day. Uh, just to recap, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, leech wheels. There's that leech wheel, the one that is available. Here it is. Never been used. Has never had a clay on it, and it hasn't even been oiled yet. It hasn't been set. It doesn't even have ballast yet in the in the in the uh, flywheel there. I put sand ballast in it, you see. And it has to be, it has to be um, greased up. Yeah, so all these, these, gre these grease points have, no, have no grease in them as yet. Um, so yeah, this guy is ready to roll. Anybody who wants it, let me know. It's yours. Just pay me and you can take it away. <laughs> um, yeah, other than that, I have the, tr the kit wheel, as I said. Workshops are ongoing. Please come. Please come, if you can. Do not fear. There is no COVID here. <laughs> All right. Do not fear. There is no COVID here. <laughs> uh, neither bring any here, preferably. Um, but we're, I'm not really fussed about having to wear masks or anything like that. Uh, what else? Um, what else? Come on, brain, think. Yes, Zoom clay. I am still doing Zoom clay, you know, with the webcam. And the, if anybody is interested in doing that, and they, if they're too fearful to come to a workshop, do Zoom clay if you would like. I don't know, it's about 30 or 40 bucks, something like that, for like a, a bit over an hour, if that grabs you. It might, it might help you. It's been working out quite well, actually, when I was doing it last. You know, I found it was, it was actually quite a good way of teaching. And it's just like a YouTube video, just like we're doing now, except it's just you and me. And I'm talking to you and you're talking back to me. And then we... You have your wheel just there in my computer screen, and I'm in your computer screen, and then I just tell you what to do, or you tell you what you're doing wrong, or tell you to slow down, or shut up, or stop talking. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it works actually quite well. Yes, so that's about it. Okay, folks, thanks for joining us. There we are, just making this style of 
And now you're going to see me go through next. What I will do is I will probably be trimming these and then I'll be putting on this iron oxide. Then I'll be putting on the, the white slip wash or hackamy. And then it'll be, they'll be raw glazed and then they'll be, uh, have iron oxide little decorations put on. And that's it. Thanks a lot. Keep practicing. See you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.